Hi guys, I'm Chrissy. I am one of the youth pastoral team, mostly working at the Fenton campus. Um, today I want to walk through a passage of scripture from you from the book of Galatians chapter 4 verses 1 through 7. If you want to go ahead and open your Bibles and get there, um, why don't you press pause for a second and I'll wait for you, okay? Ready? All right, let's go. Think of it this way. If a father dies and leaves an inheritance for his young children, those children are not much better off than slaves until they grow up, even though they actually own everything their father had. They have to obey their guardians until they reach whatever age their father set. And that's the way it was with us before Christ came. We were like children. We were slaves to the basic spiritual principles of the world. But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy our freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you're his child, God made you his heir. So we're going to come back to that, that passage in just a minute, but right now I want to tell you a story about two different boys. Uh, boy number one, we met the very first day that we moved to St. Louis, and he was extremely friendly right off the bat. Um, so a few days after, we're sitting in our family room, and the boys are sort of watching TV, and he comes and joins us, and, um, and I'm unpacking boxes, and I look up, and I see this kid with his head in our refrigerator looking for something to eat without even asking. I know, that's crazy, right? We had a little talk about boundaries, okay? Um, boy number two was adopted into our family two years ago. Uh, he became one of us right away and we couldn't wait for him to start feeling at home about everything. Um, we showed him where the secret family key was hidden for the house. We t let him have access to everything that was in the pantry or the refrigerator. We, um, he gets hand-me-down clothes from his brothers. They have wrestling matches. They share the chores. He gets a banana cake on his birthday and he calls uh, my mom and dad, grandma and grandpa. There's nothing in our lives or in our hearts that is off limits to him. He has access to it all because he's one of us. He was adopted as a son. And a son or daughter in a family has a different status, don't they? So if we go back to the scripture, we see um, that God says that he wants to adopt us into his family. Now, we accept that invitation when we invite Jesus to be at the center of our lives. And when we do that, the scripture says that God sends the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. We no longer belong to the world, but we belong to our Father in heaven, and we have access to everything that he offers us. Um, we're no longer slaves. We get to call him Father because we're his. So, if you've asked Jesus to be the center of your life and you've already made that decision, how does that change the way you live? Because it really should change the way we live. If you're still on the fence about that and still kind of trying to um, decide what to do with Jesus, what are you waiting for? What questions do you have that keep you from taking that next step? Let me encourage you to talk to one of your pastors or your small group leader. Any, any of us would love to help you in that process. I'm a daughter of the King, of, of my Savior. I'm a daughter of the eternal God. And I promise you, there's nothing better than that. And I want it for you.